everybody, I'm Joey Paul and I'm an indie author and welcome back to my channel. Today I know it says tea on the title but I'm not actually going to be spilling tea as such. I'm just going to talk about covers and the ones that I really love and the ones that um, I've grown up with and really enjoyed and just basically give you an idea of what looks good in a cover to my eyes and I'm not someone who's trained in cover design but I just wanted to talk and gush about covers so I figured I would frame it in this tea video which is not really a tea video but I'm not good at this stuff so there we go so I have I got my best friend to pick four covers that she liked from her childhood and I've got two of my own covers because again I don't want to be seen as egotistical so I'm just going to go through and show you the covers and tell you what it is about them that I like and why they stuck out to me or stuck out to my friend and all the rest of it. I asked her to pick um, young adult books but she seems to have gone mostly for the branch between middle grade and lower YA but that's okay. So the first one is The Demon Headmaster by Gillian Cross. Now I grew up with these books and growing up with B as a best friend I knew that she really loved them. This cover is very well worn, the, all of the books are very well worn because we are a reading book household. But I like that it has the headmaster on the front and it looks demonishy. Now if you don't know what this book about, it's basically about um, going to school and finding out that the headmaster isn't as good as he um, appears and um, he's controlling them. I can't remember the whole series because I only read this one and it wasn't really my cup of tea. B has read all of them, like there's like four or five in the series and she read all of them and she loves them. I really should have waited until she got up so that she could share with you why she likes this book. But anyway, it's a good cover. It has the scary writing, it has the scary headmaster and it's simplistic but it also packs the punch of what you wanted to pack. The next one is Matilda by Roald Dahl. Now I have adored this book most of my childhood and into my adulthood. I've seen the movie and the movie actually was really good because normally movies don't do well as books, for me at least, but yeah. And I just, I love this cover. It was designed by Quentin Blake, which I know did a lot of Roald Dahl covers um, and um, he's an amazing illustrator. It's the same as when I did that video about ableist books with Jackie Wilson and Nick Charette. Quentin Blake is basically associated with Roald Dahl, so it's just, yeah, it's just. But I love this cover because I love the illustration. I love all the books surrounding her. It just, it speaks to me in a way that I think it was supposed to. You know, I was a bookie kid and I wanted to read books about books, so, you know, and if you don't know the, the series of what of um, Matilda, it's basically a girl who grows up in an abusive household and is able to learn how to teach herself how to read, escapes into the world, and is very, very intelligent. And I won't spoil the rest for you because I feel like it's something that if you haven't read, you probably should and enjoy. Now I haven't read this one, but um, it's Sheila etc. Frankie's Beach House. Frankie, Peaches and Me by Karen McCombie. Now again, this is more middle grade and I think um, B picked it up because she's very much a middle grade young adult reader, even at the age that we are at now. Um, but this is the first in the series. I haven't read the series, but I just, I love the cover. It's just, it's so inviting and it's just like, it goes onto the back as well, which I really love when books do that. Um, it's just it's a beach scene and you've got the kids you've got the cat you've got on the back you've got a sh seagull chasing a boy with a dog and it's just it, it's just it's a really pretty cover and it's really inviting and yeah you just you want to read it you want to find out more at least i would if i was in a teen in a bookshop i would and the final other covers are um, Escape from Shangri-La by Michael Mopogo. Now I'm sure you've probably heard of Michael Mopogo. He is an amazing, amazing writer and he writes kind of historical fiction for teens and middle grade and it's just, it's always beautifully told and I just, his covers are amazing. I don't know who designs them. I don't think it says, oh, cover illustration by Claire Fletcher. So um, again, it's more this drawing. And I will point out that um, all of these books are mostly hand illustrated or hand drawn or computer drawn. They're not like stock photos or anything. And I have nothing against stock photos. I just prefer the personal touch 
on my covers and on these covers basically. Oh, it's about the Meaches of Dunkirk. I have, um, yeah, I think I've read this one, but I can't remember. But it's just, again, it's, it's, it's a powerful image and it's a powerful cover. And I just, I love the way it is presented to us. So going on to my own covers, I picked two because I have like so many books and I love all the covers, but I wanted to pick two that really, when I saw them, I was like, wow. So the first one is Destination Unknown, which is a story about time travel um, and chronic illness. And I love this one because it was really simplistic. Like you've got the um, 2010 train tickets and then you've got the 1910 train tickets and it's set in 2010 in the UK in the railway village and um, so that's why they had the railway tickets and um, she time travels between 2010 and 1910 and I just I, I love the detail that B put into this if you don't know B designs all my covers um, but like if you don't know and you, you why would you there's a little green writing at the back of um, the 2010 right hand ticket actually all says Joey Paul in tiny tiny writing and I, okay you can't I can see it because I know it's there but you can't see it but that's because on the back of 20 back of regular train tickets or what, what was regular train tickets then they have like green writing that dictates which train line they're with um, and so we did it with my name instead um, but yeah I just I, I love it and the background it's on the um, paving stones on they they play a part and it was just very minimalist but also kind of like I just felt it spoke to the story and I just I really loved that I really love this cover I really love the simplicity of it but at the same time there's lots of hidden messages and I just I really really loved it uh, I really do love it and um, yeah it was a, it's definitely a favorite cover of mine and it's one that I keep coming back to and the final one of mine is um, the first dying thoughts book now when I first started um, releasing the dying thoughts um, I didn't have decent covers which is one of the reasons why I feel so passionately about having decent covers because I made the mistake of releasing my first five books without decent covers it was only really when third wish was released that we 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 i say we i i realized that um covers were really really important now if you go to goodreads you can still see the original covers because goodreads don't ever delete that stuff but this cover for first touch was just now, they never came out in paperback with the old covers because I knew it was deep down that they weren't good covers. Um, and it was really only as we did we did the covers for all of the series and all of the books that um, I really fell in love with the idea of having them as paperbacks. So, um, so that's my mistake and shame and stuff. But that's one of the reasons why I really invest a lot in covers now because I've learned from my mistakes. And First Touch was one of the ones that when it came through as a finished cover, I was like, wow, it was, I should have waited. I should have waited and had this cover be the cover that everybody saw when First Touch was first released. Um, so there you've got Tara in the middle, you've got the shops in the background, you've got the ghosts, you've got the Russian stuff, of people going past. And it's just, it's just, I love it. It's a very powerful cover to me. And it's one that I really, really just wish that I'd waited for because I didn't, I didn't wait for it. I, I released the book with the old, 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 very basic cover and um, I paid for it and I'm still paying for it now because people on Goodreads will see that cover and people think, whoa, that's not a good cover. And that's what I don't want you guys to have, which is one of the reasons why I made this video is not just to showcase other people's decent covers, but also to just sort of like act as a warning, which I guess is the tea. Um, I guess there is tea in this, is that just because you are everything ready and you're ready to publish and you think that everything is perfect, just make sure that the cover you have is one that you want people to associate with you and your brand and your book and everything else don't make the mistakes that i made 
and have it bite you in the backside because it did and it still is and it's something that I'm having to work to shed as such and I don't know whether I ever will actually shed that completely or whether it will always be a case of well the covers are great now but you know when they were first released but there we go I make the effort now making sure that I have good covers for every book I release and I make sure that the cover fits the genre and it fits the story and all the rest of it and it's just a case of making sure that or telling you to do the same make sure that your covers fit the genre fit the story and fit everything else because you don't want to pay for it later down the line so yeah that's basically what I was hoping to get across with this video and I also wanted to show off just some covers that I really like because you know that's always a good thing now these are the, the four that I showed you before mine they're all traditionally published books mostly because when we were kids there wasn't really such a thing as non-traditionally published books um I don't think so anyway but I have read or have seen some indie books that have beautiful covers and I'm sure that if you think about it you can name it several like you know Sabi Liza I love her covers I love the one for Sculpt Yourself, I love the one for One Final Vinyl, I just, I adore the covers. And you can go through other author tubers and also other indie authors and you will find decent covers and you will find beautiful covers and they will fit the genre and the space and all the rest of it. And it's just about making sure that you make that choice when you're preparing for release to bring about a cover that actually that, that matches your work that is what you want to project to the public and the world because once you've made that choice and released that book you can go back and unrelease it and you can go back and redo it again but some people will have seen that old cover and they will associate it with you and your brand whether you want them to or not so that's my word of warning and that's basically you know it so what's your favourite cover of your childhood or of recent years or anything else like that? Just let me know about it in the comments down below. So that's all I've got time for today. If you want to support my channel, you can comment, like or subscribe. I post new videos on Thursdays. You can find me all over social media and my books are available everywhere. And don't forget to pick up Lights On or Lights Out, all the links of which are listed below. Thanks for watching and remember to keep writing. Bye.